Today, we continue our journey of looking into the mechanisms to classify the market regime in a programmatic and quantifiable way. Specifically, we will continue on our quest to identify whether the market is trending or not, and if it is, in which direction. But why is this important? Well, by knowing what the current market regime is, means that we can then build rules, for example, to decide whether or not to trade against a prevailing trend. So effectively using a programmatic filter, helping to turn the probabilities more in our favor. Following on from the brief study last time of using a single moving average for this, we progressed this time to using two moving averages in conjunction with each other. So stay tuned. So last time we looked at how we can undertake this challenge of identifying what the market's doing in terms of its trending behavior. And to do that, we used a single moving average line. But as we saw, one of the main problems with this is that it can either categorize the market as trending upwards or trending downwards, but with nothing in between. We then also looked at how this compared to the Arun indicator and saw that in terms of the classifications that those two different indicators provide, it's actually extremely similar. But today we move on to a different technique using moving averages that does allow us to perform that middle categorization, a categorization that determines the market isn't trending in either direction. And to do that, we'll use the dual moving average technique. Now, I'm going to show two ways of using this. The first is a simplistic version, which just does categorize into these uptrend or downtrend categories. And then this slightly more advanced interpretation that will allow us to get the third category. So let's now take a look. So the two moving averages that I've chosen to use here are 50 periods, which is the red line, and 100 periods, which is the green line. But to determine the best values to use, that can be done through a combination of you studying the charts of the underlying assets that you trade, and also performing backtesting in order to come up with those optimal values. Now, first of all, we're going to look at the simple classification. And here, this is simply a case of determining whether the fast moving average, so that with the smaller number of periods, is above or below the slower moving average. And the general rule of thumb here is that if the fast moving average is below the slow moving average, as you can see in this area here, then this is indicative of a downtrend. And when the fast moving average is above the slow, it's indicative of an uptrend. So using that simplistic categorization, let's take a look at what this looks like. So as you can see, these two areas here where the red line is below the green have both been classified as downtrends. And these areas here where the red line is above the green have been classified as uptrends. Now this looks very different to the classifications we saw last time when using a single moving average. And if we put those results side by side, we can see what that main difference is. So the first thing we notice is that it's much more consistent. The technique seems to determine the direction of a trend and sticks with it. Whereas when using the single moving average, as you can see when it's in these periods of trading ranges, it's continually flip-flopping between the two. But what you need to do for yourself is look at these two charts and make your own decision about which of these you think does a better job. For me personally, I think it's the dual moving average, but you may well come to a different conclusion. But let's now move on because we've only looked at this simplified mechanism for the classification of either into an uptrend or a downtrend. 
the more advanced interpretation actually combines what we had with the single moving average where we look at the slope or the gradient of the line and combine that information with the dual moving average approach. So let me explain. When the red line is underneath the green line, which as we know is indicative of a downtrend, there's now an additional rule, which is looking at the slope. So if we look at this area of the chart here, we can see that the red line turns up. Now, when we use the single moving average approach, remember an upward slope is indicative of an uptrend. So we now have conflicting information. The red line is still below the green line, meaning we're still effectively in a downtrend, but because the red line is going upwards, this is indicative of an uptrend. And it's this disagreement between the two techniques that gives us our third category. And that category is that we don't actually know if we're in an uptrend or a downtrend. But as you can see here, when that behavior does exhibit, the price is actually in a trading range. So in this particular example, it looks like it might be doing a good categorization using this double rule approach. So let's now re-color code our chart to show what this now gives us. So using that exact rule, we now either have a classification of a downtrend, which is the red area, an uptrend, which is the green area, and everything else where there's some conflict between the two are these yellow regions. So let's just take a closer look at a few of these. So if we look at this one here in the middle, the red line is above the green line, which is indicative of an uptrend. However, the red line is moving downwards, which is indicative of a downtrend. And so it's that conflict that gives us the yellow area. And it's a similar problem in each of these areas. And so we're not able to result in that determination of an uptrend or downtrend. So let's now compare this side by side with the more simplistic interpretation. And what you'll notice is that with the simplistic method, this period of time here where there's a trading range, remember, was completely categorized as an uptrend whereas now much of it is determined as not being in a trend. And so again, you need to look at this and look at other charts to make that evaluation for yourself about which of these is better. But for me personally, I think the more advanced interpretation is the better one. But what I would encourage you to do is to play about with these techniques, open up different charts, different underlying assets, different time frames. perform this kind of categorization yourself, change parameter values. Don't listen to what I'm saying, make your own decisions, because only by going through that kind of process will you truly start to understand how the dynamics of these indicators work. And if you get that really good understanding, then you're in a far better place to be able to start building and designing your own trading strategies. Now, in the next episode, we take this concept even further and we start to look at a triple moving average technique. Now, this was actually originally devised with the intention of giving us these third categories where we don't want to classify either an up or a down trend. And so this gives us yet another methodology that we can use and incorporate into our trading strategies. Now click top right to go straight to that episode if it's available. If not, then please subscribe. Also do remember to give me a like if you've got value from today's session. And so until next time, trade safe.